Hi, this is Miss Cairo. This is lesson 3-5. And what we're going to be doing today is multiplying fractions and multiplying a whole number times a fraction using multiplication. Um, so what we're going to start off with is just a little bit of a review from our previous lesson. And in previous lessons, we we're drawing lots of diagrams and arrays. And we were constantly thinking to ourselves, is there a shortcut for this? And there was, in fact, um, a mathematical shortcut of using just straightforward multiplication. And we talked about it yesterday or in the previous lesson where, for example, if we have two fractions, so you can either follow along with me or just this will be pretty quick. If we have um, two fractions, such as two thirds times one fifth, we said the shortcut way of doing this rather than drawing out an array and splitting it up into thirds and shading and so on, that we can simply multiply across. And what I mean by multiply across is we multiply first our numerators to get our new numerator. So two times one arrives us at two as our numerator and then multiply across with our denominators. Three times five is equal to 15. And with our background knowledge with the arrays, we know multiplying a fraction times a fraction, we're always going to arrive at a fraction. So I can already, um, as you saw before I even started to multiply across, I already put in my fraction bar as my answer. All right, so the trick is multiply across. Um, one thing I want to introduce you to is um, with whole numbers, what we were working with yesterday, for example, one fifth times two wholes. 1 fifth times 2. Here's how I'd like you to start solving this. Um, one pattern that some of our classmates notice is that you multiply the numerator times the whole number to get the new numerator, and the denominator stays the same. That's one way of doing it, but here's another way. Another way is to turn your whole number into a fraction. Okay, so 1 fifth is already a fraction, and so I'm going to rewrite it just as 1 fifth. How do we rewrite two wholes as a fraction? Do you remember? Two is its numerator and one is its denominator. So anytime you see a whole number to turn it into a, a fraction is you just, um, you make the whole number your numerator and add one as its denominator. All right, and now we can follow that same exact rule of multiplying across. 1 times 2 gives us 2 as our numerator, and then 5 times 1 gives us 5 as our denominator. Okay? So, for example, um, if I'm working with 13 holes, what's 13 holes equal to in fraction form? 13 ones. Um, 52. How do I write, rewrite 52 as a fraction? 52 ones. Uh, 1,080, sorry, 1,802. How do I rewrite that as a fraction? 1,802 ones. See the pattern? One as its denominator. Okay, so now that we, I briefly introduced you to that, um, let's talk about simplest form. Repeat after me, simplest form. Simplest form means it's a term that goes along with fractions. And what you're looking for is that you're making sure that the fractions numerator and denominator do not share a common factor other than one. So for example, go ahead and write this out with me on your whiteboard. Get your whiteboard ready. Write out this fraction, 5 fifteenths. If you arrived... Um, at an answer of 5 fifteenths, you would stop and ask yourself, is this in simplest form? Well, is it, boys and girls? It's not. 5 and 15 do share a common factor other than 1. What's their other common factor other than 1? It is 5. Both 5 and 15 can be divided by 15. 5 is obviously a factor of 15. And when you divide 5, divide it by 5. We arrive at 1, and 15 divided by 5 is 3. And we just arrived at an equivalent fraction to 5 fifteenths, which is 1 third, which is indeed 
in its simplest form. I can't divide one by three by anything else other than one to get anything lower than what it is right now. So we're going back to unit one concepts of finding equivalent fractions in this, and we're constantly searching for creating simplest forms out of fractions. So let's just play around with like another one. Let's do four six. Is four six in its simplest form? No. They do share a common factor other than one. The factors of four are one, two, and four, and the factors of six are one, two, three, and six. What other common factor did they share other than one? Two. Again, if you want to meet what I just listed out in my head is exactly what we do in morning work constantly. That's why we're doing morning work over and over and over so that you can do this mentally. Their common factor other than one is two. So I'm going to do divide by two, divide by two. Four divided by two is equal to two. And six divided by two is equal to three. Four six in its simplest form is two thirds. Okay, so we're going to be talking about simplest form quite a bit. And why are we talking about this with multiplication? We're going to solve one problem and we're going to solve it in two different ways. And here's the problem that we're going to work with. What I'd like you to do is I'd actually like you to get your whiteboard, go ahead and erase it if you were working with me, split it up into two pieces. So draw a line down the middle and we're going to rewrite this problem um, on one side. Let's just solve it actually just one way on here. <laughs> Three tenths times five twelfths. All right. If we follow the rule that we were working with on the previous page of multiply across, let's just do that and let's take a look at our answer. So let's just multiply across and take a look at what we get. So three times five is equal to 15. And what's 10 times 12? Hopefully you remember from third grade, that pattern. Anytime you multiply times 10, you just add a zero. So 120, 10 times 12 is 120. Is 15 twentieths in its simplest form? Yes or no? No. I see that 15 has a five at the end and 120 has a zero at the end. I know from my background knowledge that anytime a number ends in five or zero, it's divisible by five. So if I were to see that, I'm going to rewrite it over here for more room and you can too. Rewrite it out 5 20th, sorry, 15 120 ths can in fact be divided by 5 for each of these numbers. So go ahead and write divide by 5, divide by 5. What's 15 divided by 5? It is 3. What's 120 divided by 5? Oh man, we're going to have to maybe do some long division for this. 5 goes into 12 two times, and when I multiply, I'm doing all, I'm probably doing a lot of the work for you. 15, sorry, 120 divided by 5 is equal to 24. Is 3 24 in its simplest form? It's not. It can be divided again. 3 is a factor of 24. I can divide 24 and 3 by 3 to get another equivalent fraction. 3 divided by 3 is equal to 1. What's 24 divided by 3? 8. Is 1 eighth in its simplest form? Yes, I can't keep dividing by anything else other than 1, so it is in its simplest form. 3 tenths times 5 twelfths does in fact equal 15 120 ths but starting this lesson, we're always striving for answers in its simplest form. That is true, but there's another um, equivalent fraction that goes along with it in its simplest form, and it's 1 eighth. That was quite a bit of work. What if I told you that there's an easier way to do this? So that's on one side of your whiteboard. Let's rewrite out the problem nice and clear, leaving a little bit of space in between our fractions, just like this. 3 tenths times 5 twelfths. Go ahead and rewrite it out just like I'm doing. We can also simplify before we multiply. 
So there's a trick to do this. Simplify before you multiply means you're looking for a denominator and a numerator that share a common factor that you can divide by. Okay, so this only works, you're looking at denominators and numerators. Do three and 10 share a common factor other than one? No, the factors of three are one and three. The factors of 10 are one, two, five, and 10. Hmm, I'm gonna compare this denominator to this numerator of here. Do five and 10 share a common factor? They do, five is a factor of 10. So I can divide 10 by five, and this five divided by five, whatever I do to one denominator or one numerator, I have to do to another to get an equivalent fraction here. So five and 10 share the common factor of five. So we wrote up divide by five, divided by five. Did you do that as well? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna solve. And as we solve, we're gonna cross out our division sentence so we don't get mixed up here. So five divided by five is obviously what? One, so I crossed out five divided by five and wrote out one. What's five divided by, sorry, 10 divided by five? It's equal to two, so I'm gonna cross out that equation and write the number two. All right, am I done? Are we ready to solve? Well, I'm gonna check again. Do I have a numerator and a denominator that share a common factor? So three and two do not share a common factor other than one. What about three and 12? Do they share a common factor? They do. Three is a factor of 12. So I can divide three by three and 12 by three to arrive at an answer. Three divided by three is equal to, so write out divide by three, divide by three. Does yours look like mine? And then we're gonna cross out and solve. Three divided by three is one. What's 12 divided by three? Four. So I'm gonna cross out and write the number four. Do you see how quickly you need to know your division facts for this unit or for this lesson already? You have to have them memorized and you have to know them quickly. Okay, so now I think I'm ready for success. Any numerators left that can be divided with a common factor with a denominator? No. So we're gonna multiply across. I'm left with one times one here. What's one times one? One gives us our new numerator. And then two and four are remaining denominators. We're gonna multiply across to get eight as our denominator and our product. One eighth is that it's in its simplest form? Yes. Same answer over here, two different ways of doing it. What we did over here is we multiplied and then simplified. What we did over here is we simplified and then multiplied. Which way do you think is easier? I actually probably shouldn't have led you to this answer so quickly. Um, I should have had you maybe try it out, but since you know we're doing it through video, it's a little harder. This way is in fact easier. It will be less math and um, I'll demonstrate it with a few other problems maybe a little later on. Simplifying before multiplying will save you quite a bit of time and be much easier mathematically. All right, so that being said, Let's go into our notes and let's write out what the rules for multiplying fractions, um, what, what the rules are for multiplying fractions. So get your notebook out. And I'd like you to title this section of your notes, simplify then multiply. And if you wanna put um, the lesson number, it's lesson 3-5 if you wanna put that into your notes. If you wanna put the date, you're welcome to do that. I'm gonna keep mine centered. I kept it in all caps, you can do that. You can underline it so that you can easily find this section in your notes, whatever you're multiplying fractions or whole numbers. So um, the vocabulary word that I was using quite a bit in this lesson that you're gonna to have to be familiar with in coming lessons is that term simplest form. Let's write out the definition of simplest form just in case you come across it um, at any point and you need to refer back to what the definition is. Simplest form, go ahead and write that out. It's when a fraction's numerator and denominator do not share a common factor other than one. So it's when a fraction's numerator and denominator 
do not share a common factor other than one. So all numbers have the common factor of one. You're looking for anything else other than one. So go ahead and have that definition in your notes again in case you need to reference and find if you are doing problems on your own or problems on a quiz and it says simplest form and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I forget what that means. You can go back to your notes and you'll have it right here to help you out. All right. And then the next thing that we're going to do in our notes is we are going to write out the four steps on how to multiply fractions. How to multiply fractions. And what we'll do is again, we'll make this kind of bold, maybe even underline it if you need to. All right, there's four steps on multiplying fractions. Number one, if there's a whole number in your problem, if you're multiplying a whole number times a fraction, what you're going to do is you're going to turn the whole number or maybe turn a, uh, yeah, turn the whole number into a fraction. All right. Number two. We're gonna simplify first. So before you start multiplying across, you're gonna see if you can simplify. And here's the question you're asking yourself as you're simplifying. Can any denominator in your problem or numerator, so you're looking at numerators and denominators and you're trying to max them, match them up, be divided by a common factor. And once you do some division, if needed, if you can, once everything's all simplified, you're multiplying across. And then the last step, when you arrive at your answer, you're gonna check. So once you arrive at your answer, you're going to check and you're going to think to yourself, is my product in simplest form? And once you have these steps into your notebooks, Let's do one example so that you can, again, always refer back to. I'm going to do a small example underneath it. Example. Go ahead and do this into your notes so that you can refer back to it as an example. Let's do 2 thirds times 30. 2 thirds times 30. All right, first step, turn the whole number into a fraction. We have a whole number here, 30, and we're gonna turn it into a fraction, obviously. So I'll do it right next to it. I'm gonna do equals. Two thirds is already in fraction form. I'm gonna leave a little bit of space because I'm anticipating that we are probably gonna simplify for this. So leave a little space just like I did, times what's 30 in fraction form? 30 ones. And again, Organization really plays a key role into this. Make sure your numerators are lined up. Make sure your denominators are lined up. Make sure you have a little bit of space because we are gonna be doing some division. All right, number two, simplify. Can any denominator or numerator be divided by a common factor? So I'm looking at two. Does two and three share a common factor other than one? No, does two and one share a common factor other than one? No, so let me hop on over to this numerator, 30. 30, I'm gonna match up with the other denominators and I'm asking and I'm, and I'm asking myself, do they share a common factor? Do 30 and three share a common factor? They do. Three is a factor of 30. So that means I can divide 30 by three. 
and three divided by three. Um, how did I arrive at that so quickly? Well, I know that three times 10 is equal to 30. I know that from my fast math facts, I have this all this number sense in my head and I'm helping you guys do as well. Okay, so all of these concepts that we've been going over and over and all these skills are leading up to um, concepts like this, okay? All right, so now we're gonna divide across, we're gonna divide and we're gonna cross out our division sentence and we're gonna write our answers. So 30 divided by three is equal to 10. Yep, three times 10 equals 30. So I'm gonna cross it out and rewrite 10 somewhere nice and neat. And then what's three divided by three? Yep, any number divided by itself is always equal to one. All right, I'm gonna double check. Can I simplify any other numerator and denominator? Well, both my denominators are one, so that tells me, nope, I'm ready to multiply across. Step number three, do an equal sign. I already know my answer is gonna be in fraction form, so I could put my fraction bar there. Two times 10 is equal to 20. And one times one is equal to one. And I have our answer as 21s. And last step, check, is my product in simplest form? Yep, 20 and one don't share a common factor other than one, but there is something wrong about with this fraction. If I were, you know, talking about a real life situation of something, I wouldn't say, you know, um, for example, if the word problem was, she walked two thirds of a 30 mile track, um, how many miles did she walk? Which would we say she walked 21s of a mile? Nope, we would, there's one last step to changing. If you ever arrive at an answer with one as its denominator, you just turn it into a whole number. 21s is equal to 20. And there's our answer. That brings us to, that was actually number one on page 79 in your activity book. We're going to continue working away in our activity book, but we are going to pause the video there. Thanks so much for following along. Please have this, these notes open to help you out with the rest of lesson 3-5.